Coaches, what's going on? I'm Coach b -Saw. Welcome to the Spread Offense channel. Thank you for being here. Today's video is going to be about using jet motion in the spread offense. I'm going to show you two simple concepts that I like to use. I like to use jet motion a lot in the pass game and in the run game. And I kind of have a series of, of jet motion that I use, even with some RPO stuff. But today I'm just going to show you two simple concepts, and that's going to be jet motion with GT counter tray. So hopefully, uh, if you haven't seen what I'm going to show you today, maybe you can you know take away a few things here and there, uh, at least maybe add some wrinkles or implement what I'm going to show you uh, into what you're doing offensively. Before I get to the video, though, if you haven't been here before, welcome. I try to do my best to cover anything and everything related to the spread. That's what this channel is completely dedicated for. So if that interests you and you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit subscribe below and then tap the bell next to it. That way you can get notified next time I come out with a video. All right, guys, let's get right to it. Take a look at how you can start using jet motion in your offense with GT counter tray. All right, coach, the two simple concepts I'm going to go over today is using jet motion with counter tray. Uh, the reason why I like using jet motion is one, I really can find different ways to get my slot receivers the football, whether it's in the run game uh, or in the pass game. Those guys are usually my fast guys. Uh, it's sometimes a little more difficult to get them the football in the pass game. So I like to use jet motion and, and try to find different ways to get them uh, involved in the run game as well. So um, I, I really like it because of that. Also, I like it because you have options to go full flow or split flow with the jet motion. And, and it really depends on the, the adjustments that you see from the defense. So uh, if you're using jet motion, then what you should be looking for when you use that type of motion is how the defense is reacting or adjusting to that type of motion. If you're playing a defense that plays more man principles, maybe they you know over rotate or, or they like to bring pressure off the edge with that motion, um, then that is a good time to be able to go split flow so bring the jet motion and then bring the football back to where jet motion was coming from because if they're going to be over rotating safeties or maybe bouncing linebackers and really kind of flooding to what is now the three receiver side with the jet motion, they're vacating the back side, right? They're going to be, if they're spinning safeties or moving backers into the box to flood to, to the three receiver side, you know, assuming we're starting out in two by two, uh, then they're vacating the back side there. They're leaving a hole, and that's where you want to be able to attack uh, offensively. That's where you want to attack the defense. If you're facing a team that plays more zone principles, right? You bring motion, you you shift, do all that stuff, and you see teams that don't really adjust very much, and they're kind of just staying where they are. Then that's a good indicator that you should be bringing jet motion and going more front side, staying full flow with that type of action because. You're able to bring that receiver as an extra number. You can use the two receivers on the other side, again, thinking two by two, and even getting your back involved as well. So you're either able to uh, neutralize the man advantage that, that the defense has or even gain a hat on that front side when you're using jet motion. So those are the things that I usually look for when using jet motion to help me decide, do I keep it on the front side? Uh, you know, maybe it's, it's sprint out pass game. Maybe it's running power read. We do those things uh, as well. Or are they over rotating? Are they spinning hard to, to try to contain the edge and really stop our jet sweep? If, if that's the case, then I like to hit it and go back, uh, where jet motion was coming from. So I'm going to show you the two different ways that I like to use it, uh, involving GT counter tray. All right, coach. So the first way that I like to run counter tray with jet motion is going to be starting in this two by two look here. And we're going to be going uh, using our slot in the left, using him jet motion uh, across the field to the right. Now, you can obviously do this in either direction. We're just going to start from the left side receiver here, bring in him in jet motion. Uh, when we have our quarterback bring a guy in motion for us in shotgun, it's pretty easy. I don't really like moving the legs at all um, or picking anything up, putting it down. For us, we just wave him in like this, and that tells the receiver that he's coming in motion. So that's what we'll do. We'll wave him in. When he gets the signal to come in uh, for the quarterback, it's the timing is all on him. So we have a little bit different timing with our motion depending on where the football is going to go. If we're going to go more front side and, and keep it on the front side with the motion, then the quarterback is going to snap the ball up when he sees uh, that receiver flash right in front of him. Uh, when we're going to go split flow and the ball can come back to the other way, maybe we have some triple option type stuff 
then we want that ball snapped up by the time this receiver gets to this tackle's outside leg. Okay, so as he's coming in motion, we're gonna be running some split flow here. We want that ball to be timed up and snapped up by the time he gets to the outside leg. So that's what we tell our quarterback, okay? So we're bringing him in jet motion. Hey, he'll be right there. And then we're gonna be running counter trade to the left. So if we're running counter trade against this look here, all right, our center is gonna block the first guy to the backside of the center line. So he's got here. These two are gonna work together on that defensive tackle. And most likely if he's inside shade of that guard, it's gonna be our left tackle who comes over the top and he's gonna pick up the backside linebacker who is on the backside of the center line as well. Okay, we're gonna leave that defensive end. Our guard here on the backside is gonna kick the defensive end out. And then our tackle is gonna follow. He's gonna wrap, pull, for that front side linebacker on the left side of the center line. Okay, so we've got five guys to block. They've got six guys in the box. We can't block everyone, so we're gonna be ending up reading that defensive end right there. Okay, so as we come in jet motion, all right, that ball gets snapped up to the quarterback. We don't do any type of play fake here. Okay, we're just using jet motion, all right, kind of to, to for, for eye candy to dress this play up a little bit. Hopefully we can move those linebackers a little bit we can hold off that backside defensive end if we need to. But really, we want to be moving these guys in the back end of the coverage. That way, we can make our blocks easier up front if this does hit on the backside. Okay, so we're bringing that jet motion. Now, we're going to get to the mesh point here with our quarterback and our running back. So, for the footwork with our running back, when that ball snapped up, he's going to take a counter step with his right foot. Okay, he's going to sell that action as if he's going front side with it. Then he's going to use his left foot on his second step to get back to the mesh point. Okay, our quarterback is going to get, he, all he's focused on is getting the ball in his hands. And then he's going to square up that defensive end and he's going to re, end up reading him. Okay, so his footwork is the exact same way. I, I, I've broken it down before, fundamentals of the mesh point. I got a video out, so if you're not quite sure, you haven't seen it before, go check out that video as far as the footwork between the back and uh, the quarterback and the running back he's gonna keep that same footwork, okay? So he's gonna bucket step, and then he's gonna put that ball on his back leg. So here it would be his right leg. We're not gonna play fake anything with the jet motion, okay? So we're not gonna token fake or punch or do anything like that uh, because we want to make sure that we've got the mesh point secured. We're, we wanna make sure that we can read this guy as long as possible. So our eyes go to him, we square him up, and then we're at the mesh point with our back here, okay? So again, same reads for inside zone read, okay? Very simple, um, able to get a lot of the same reps here. Defensive end, if he squeezes down the line of scrimmage, all right, chases the running back, or uh, you know he's, he's chasing that, that backside tackle who's, who is pulling, then our quarterback is gonna rip and he's gonna run for himself, okay? If he plays out wide, all right, jet motion kind of widens, widen, widens him out a little bit, then our quarterback is gonna give the football and he's gonna let the running back take it and we're gonna go counter trade to the left here, okay? So this is a good play if you're running uh, jet motion a lot and you've had success with maybe jet sweep or uh, you've shown jet motion enough to where you do a lot of things on the front side and that defense starts to over rotate and they're trying to take away that, that, that front side play from you. Um, if they're gonna do that and leave a hole and vacate the back side, it's a great time to go more split flow and come back and try to get the football on the backside. Okay, so I like using it as counter tray read, all right, kind of eye dressing uh, or, or window dressing and giving some eye candy to the defense there. Okay, now here's where you can kind of take it a step further and I really like doing this uh, because I love playing option football. So if you're an option football team, uh, you like running triple option, here's a great way to get triple option into this scheme right here. Okay, so as we use jet motion, we're still gonna stay the same in the backfield. Our quarterback is still gonna read that defensive end, all right, but we're gonna block it a little bit differently out front here with our two receivers. Usually we would just be two for two. Those guys are blocking in on the back um, and, and they would be taking care of these two guys here. But now if we're gonna add a layer of and make it triple option, then we're gonna take our number two receiver, okay, and we're not gonna block him because he's gonna be our second level read. So he's the first level, and then he's the, he's the first read and he's the second read here, okay? So with our receiver leaving him unblocked, we're gonna take him and we're gonna push and then crack that mic. If the mic does a good job, and if he gets over the top, 
uh, and he plays out with jet motion, we're gonna pick him up. So if he's there, we pick him up, okay? If not, Mike doesn't present himself, then we're gonna work to that safety over the top there. So we're leaving him unblocked, okay? So if the quarterback rips and run, runs for himself here, that means that defensive end is out of the equation, right? We got the read to keep it for himself. Okay, we're gonna extend the play, and then the next read that the quarterback that is gonna have is that overhang defender right here. Okay, what we do with our jet motion when we go triple is that we turn this into a bubble route. Okay, so we're here, and that receiver, if he's gonna extend that into a bubble bubble route, he needs to be able to plant that left foot firm into the ground so he can push off and get just a little bit of depth so he can turn his shoulders back towards the quarterback as he gets with. Okay, so he's really got to plant hard, push off that left foot, get with, get his eyes back to the quarterback so that he's an option to be able to throw the football. Really, it's kind of like your old school triple where this guy is now, he would be that, that, pitch, uh, that pitch player in triple option. Here, we're using it more as a bubble and we're going to be throwing it to him. Okay, so if the overhang here sees that, that action from that receiver and he plays out wide, then our quarterback's going to continue running right at him and then he's going to turn up and get downfield. If the safety overhang defender sees that quarterback coming at him and he decides to take care of it himself, then we get the ball right to our ear and we throw it out to the bubble route here who is being protected by his number one receiver block in the corner there. Okay, so um, kind of uh, evolving that regular, just the, the counter tray read with the jet motion um, from the first level read, uh, just like you would inside zone read, and then adding a next level read to it, making it triple option. So I think it's really difficult for a defense to defend just that play alone because of all the moving parts that you have uh, within this play. You've got the motion. There's a lot of eye candy in the backfield. Who's got the football? Is it the jet sweep? Is it the back coming back? Is it the quarterback? And then, you know, obviously adding the layer of making it triple option and giving him the option to throw the football. Uh, if he's got that read. So puts two defenders in conflict. And again, I think it's a really difficult play uh, for a defense to handle uh, just because of all the moving parts there. Okay. The other one here is just straight up quarterback counter tray. All right. So pretty, it's pretty much the same thing. And we are going to be giving our quarterback the option to be able to read again. Um, and this is great. If you've got an athletic quarterback, you have someone that uh, you'd like to get more involved in the run game, you know, finding different ways to have your quarterback make plays as opposed to throwing the football. So if he's got good legs and you want to use him in the run game, then this would be a good option for him. Okay, so we're going to get the same action here. We're going to still bring that, that, uh, that receiver in the slot here, still bringing him in jet motion. Okay, timing is still going to be the same. Okay, so by the time he gets to the outside leg, we need to have that ball snapped up. All right, now what we're going to do is we're still going to go counter trade to the left. Okay, so let's get that blocked here. Okay, got counter trade taken care of. We're still going to read this defensive end right here. Okay, quarterback is still going to read that player. All right, now we're going to use our running back to get onto the front side of this play though. So we're going to be two for two here. Okay, and we're going to be taking our back and he's going to hit on the front side and he's gonna pick up the first color that he sees. So it could be the mic running over the top, could be that safety who's trying to fill the alley, okay? Uh, depending on where they are lined defensively, there's been a few times where we've made adjustments and we switched that blocking responsibility. So, you know, maybe he's outside shade of number two and we don't love that type of block that we're getting from him. Then we'll push crack to the mic or to the safety and then use our back to take him coming out of the backfield. So kind of gives you options there depending on what you're seeing defensively uh, on blocking this to the front side. But we're able to get our two receivers and then use our, our running back as a third player to the front side. And we're able to at least eat, you know neutralize their main advantage that they have. Right now without the back, they've got one, two, three over two. Okay, and we're able to get that back and at least neutralize their main advantage if it does hit to the front side, okay? So still gonna be a read from the quarterback. Ball snapped up, okay? Our quarterback's gonna take one shuffle. So as he's coming through on the mesh point, we're gonna take one shuffle and we're reading this defensive end, okay? So now we're riding and deciding in front of us, okay? So as we get the ball and we're going to the right, that quarterback should be putting the ball on his left leg, 
as he's taking that one shuffle and he's gonna ride and make a decision by the time it gets to his right leg. Okay, so we're riding and deciding, riding that mesh point and reading that defensive end. Okay, if that defensive end wants to get upfield or play wide with the jet sweep, well then we're gonna rip the ball out and we're gonna run back to the left here with counter tray, uh, quarterback counter tray going to the left. Okay, if he does anything else, if, if he sits or he thinks, if the quarterback thinks that we've got the edge and we've out leveraged him, then he can give it to our receiver who's gonna be running jet sweep to the right. Okay, so two, I think, simple concepts that if you're not running right now, that I think that it should be in your playbook, uh, especially if you have got a quarterback that can run and you're already running counter tray. I think these are two nice wrinkles to counter tray. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do with jet sweep. There's a lot of different things that we do with jet sweep. Uh, but these are two simple concepts that I think you guys would benefit from um, and, and maybe adding a little wrinkle to what you're doing right now. So hopefully you guys found the video useful uh, and you found a couple new ways to be able to run counter tray in your offense with jet motion. If you guys did, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet. Uh, doing that really helps uh, me grow the channel and reach as many coaches as possible. So thanks guys for being here. I appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Don't forget to play fast, score fast, and run the spread.